So without further ado, um, I'll talk to you about extensions to neurodata without borders. All right, so uh, as you hopefully learned in the last couple of days, uh, NWB covers most types of neurophysiology data and metadata, including the metadata about the subjects, the experimental design, um, data acquisition, um, and also the measured data, such as electrical signals reported from the brain or imaging of the brain, uh, pre-processed data related to those, or behavioral measurements of the subjects. But neurophysiology experiments are often complex, and they include data types outside of those covered by NWB. Um, neurophysiology is constantly evolving. We're developing new methods to, uh, to record, record neuronal activity, record behavior. Um, how, do, how do we evolve NWB uh, to cover all of these new different data types? In addition, uh, how do we design NWB to cover data that is specific to a particular acquisition system or pre-processing tool and so forth? For example, an experimenter might want to include metadata specific to their particular data acquisition system or a pre-processing tool, or they want to encode the structure of a custom maze that they built or a custom stimuli that they used. Um, well, uh, ultimately, we want NWB as a data standard for all of neurophysiology to support all of these different kinds of data. But because data standards emerge gradually from the common needs of the community, NWB will necessarily kind of lag behind the bleeding edge. At least the core part of NWB um, won't be able to capture everything. So how can NWB flexibly support uh, all of these different kinds of custom user-defined data types from the community? Um, and by support, I mean, you know, be able to store all of these different data types in a structured way such that uh, someone else using NWB can load the data and through introspection, uh, figure out what that data means uh, in a standardized way. So we created the idea of NWB extensions. Extensions allow users to define their own data types that can be flexibly integrated into the APIs and shared and reused by the community. If there's an awesome new microscope that generates a new microscope specific data structure, someone can write an NWB extension for that microscope specific data structure, share that extension with the community, and then others can use it in their own work and build upon it collaboratively. In addition, someone who writes a file uh, with that specific extension will have the, the extension cached in the file and then uh, anyone using PyNWB or MatNWB or a similar uh, API um, will be able to read the contents of that extension um, and add to it. Uh, so how do these extensions work? So to understand that, we first have to delve into how the core NWB standard is defined. Uh, the core NWB schema is simply a set of YAML files that look something like this. Uh, the schema files uh, define a set of groups and data sets which have certain required and optional key value pairs and can contain de definitions of groups, data sets, attributes, and links. How these schema files are structured is governed by the NWB specification language. So in this example here, we define a group uh, representing a basic time series called time series. This data type extends a base type NWB data interface um, and has a doc string that says general purpose time series, it has a data set called data, uh, and an attribute with, with, um, which itself has an attribute called units, representing the unit of measurement for the data, such as volts or meters. Time series also has a data set called timestamps, and uh, which, with its own unit attributes. To bundle any related types together and prevent name conflicts across the NWB ecosystem, each data type belongs to a different namespace. Now, all of the core NWB types are part of the core namespace defined in this YAML file here. Uh, and it basically contains metadata about the namespace and it points to the individual YAML files that make up the namespace. Uh, the core NWB schema, it defines over 60 different data types for neurophysiology data. Um, extensions to define new data types would be written in the exact same language here, uh, the, the same format as these two files, and they can use and build off of existing data types, uh, such as in the core or in other extensions through um, composition and inheritance, basically this, this method here. So for example, let's say you want to define a new type 
to represent data from a tetrode, which is a specialized electrode comprised of four twisted wires. Uh, you, you would define this new tetrode series data type in a YAML file in exactly the same way as I just showed you for the time series. Here, the tetrode type extends a core data type called electrical series, and it adds a required integer attribute, the tetrode ID. You would place this new tetrode series data type in a new namespace. Let's call it NDX tetrode and provide some metadata, including your name, the version, um, and any types that were included from other namespaces, such as the electrical series type in this case. So this is just a very simple example of uh, an extension. It just adds a new data type with a new attribute, but things can get much more complex depending on what you want to uh, add to NWB. Now, writing all these YAML files by hand uh, for your extension can get pretty tedious, it can get pretty uh, error prone. Uh, so we created a template called NDX template and a Python API for creating extensions. Uh, users can use the cookie cutter template, uh, command line tool, sorry, to download and run the template like so. Cookie cutter will prompt you for all of the generic metadata and it will generate a base directory structure that includes uh, basic YAML files and a Python script for programmatically creating the YAML files so that uh, you don't have any weird errors uh, when writing these files by hand. Um, so within the generated extension directory, uh, we provide a starting point for using the PyNWB API to generate the YAML files that I showed earlier. Um, so this function here will create the namespace YAML file based on the information that you provide to the cookie cutter prompts back here. And then this code here generates the YAML file for the Tetra series data type that you create. Using this API, you can take it more easily take advantage of documentation for the different types uh, and avoid errors in handwriting these YAML files. So running the above code will generate a working extension that you can use right away. If you want to add additional functionality to your related to your Tetrode series type, you can create a custom Python or MATLAB class for Tetrode series, um, which uh, Andrew will describe in his talk. Or you can use the class uh, that is auto-generated based on the YAML specification. After this, uh, you have an extension. It works. We recommend that you publish your extension on PyPy, the Python package index, so that it becomes pip installable and accessible by others. Uh, once the extension is installed, well, how do you use it? So using the extension, it's, it's actually quite easy. Uh, in Python, all you have to do is import the class from the extension package. And then the class is fully integrated with the rest of Py and EBB. You can add the Tetrode series to a file, just like any other electrical series object. It's kind of magic. And if you're familiar with meta class programming, there's a lot of magic going on behind the scenes to dynamically generate these classes from the files. Writing the file is exactly the same, uh, but here's a key point. When uh, the, uh, the extension schema is cached within the NWB file uh, so that anyone can read the file and use the same extension types without having to find the extension and load it from uh, the Python package index or a catalog or, or a private server somewhere. Reading the file with extensions, it's almost the same as without, except you just have this additional argument here, load namespaces equals true, which will make sure to load all the extension namespaces in the file. Um, so this is kind of the overall process uh, flowchart for creating a neurodata extension. Um, in orange are the actions. So you start with the templates, uh, you set up a new extension on your computer using the cookie cutter template uh, system I described earlier. You have your own repo called uh, NDX My Extension. You can update it. You would uh, tag a new release with a particular version number. And then you would push it to whatever space, your own personal space or your lab space. Um, and then it lives there. Uh, you can then publish it on PyPy or um, kind of advertise it to the public. So then now it's on GitHub. I hope that process was pretty easy, uh, but there's a small problem. Only you would know about the extension unless you like try to advertise it publicly uh, and sp spread it to everyone. But still it's not very findable. It's not published or shared with the community necessarily. 
So effectively, probably only you would be using it. If the extension supports data types <clears throat> that might be used by someone else in the community, <clears throat> we highly encourage extension writers to take the next step and register their extension in our brand new Neurodata Extensions Catalog, or NDX Catalog for short. This will make the extension easy to find. And, uh, it then supports the reuse of common data types across the community. Uh, that way, 10 different people are not making an extension for the same microscope metadata uh, and do it in different ways such that they're not interchangeable. There's just one kind of type. Uh, if you're looking to build a microscope extension, you can go to the catalog, see if one exists, and if not, then you can build it. And if one does and it fits your needs, you can just use it. Uh, extensions that are in the catalog are tested by the NWB team, uh, and you know that they will meet criteria for acceptance into the catalog. This also simplifies access for scientists and toolmakers by encouraging a single extension for a particular use case. So like a, a tool developer making, um, trying that, that has a particular kind of analysis tool that requires a particular extension, someone else can make a similar tool that uses the same extension so that you don't have, um, so that the same data file can be used in both tools. It also simplifies collaboration and review of extensions for shared use cases. So what is the catalog? The catalog, it just consists of a bunch of GitHub repos with metadata about each extension, what it does, how to install it, where is its source code, and who maintains it. It doesn't actually contain the source code of the extension. It just contains pointers to, um, to your own individual repos that contain the extension. It's kind of like a card catalog in the old days for our library. It just has information about where to find the extension and how to install it. This is the main file that's in the, in, in the uh, catalog repo. It just says, it just has a name, a version, a, where to find the source code, where to find the, uh, the package installable on PyPy, what the license is, and who's maintaining this. So registering the extension requires the extension to be published somewhere. That way uh, it's kind of recorded in an archive and that, that version can't be changed. Um, the source code must be publicly available and developers will maintain ownership of their extension. So the source code stays in the lab or developer space. And this process was adapted from the Conda Forge process of publishing packages. Just to describe this a little in more detail, to register an extension in, our, in the catalog, you would go to this particular uh, repo here, github.com slash NWB extensions slash staged extensions. You would fork this repository, copy the, ex copy the example folder from this, and create your own folder that holds the metadata that I described earlier, um, edit it, and then submit it back as a pull request onto this main uh, repo. Uh, after you do that, uh, the catalog maintainers will review the extension, make sure that it meets best practices and that it doesn't break anything and it's compatible with the rest of NWB. And if everything is good, we will approve and you will have a new repo that you control and maintain within the NWB extensions catalog. These are some of the, uh, this is basically what I described earlier. Yeah. And then once it's registered, you can then find the Neuros data extension, your Neuro data extension on, at the catalog website. Fortunately, I think I, did not include the link here, but it's on a later slide. <laughs> but then you can search for different extensions within the catalog and see basic information about your extension and so forth. And this was recently released. We're constantly adding to it to make it prettier and make it more accessible to the public. Uh, and it already has six or so uh, extensions that you can use and browse from. Uh, if you want to update the NeuroData extension uh, after you registered in the catalog, it's a similar process, but now you're going to fork the catalog entry repo and update that and submit it back as a pull request onto that catalog repo. Finally, uh, these extensions and the extensions catalog are useful for another purpose, refining the core NWB standard. So data needs and neurophysiology are constantly evolving. So the core NWB standard will need to be updated and refined over time. 
let's say there's a new data modality that becomes extremely popular, and we want to support that in the core NWB standard. We can leverage the NWB extensions catalog and the whole framework that I just described as a testbed for changes to the core standard. Basically, you can create an extension or someone can create an extension for these new data types and get them tested by the community. You can test them yourselves. Everything is fully integrated with the core NWB standard. So you can write code that uses it just like as if it was part of the core NWB standard. Uh, and then we can review it uh, as kind of catalog maintainers and standard maintainers. We can send it out to the community for review, set up working groups for users, for developers, and for domain experts, and make sure that it works for everyone. And then if it passes a set of criteria, which are published on the catalog website, then it will be integrated into the core NWB. So, in summary, uh, extensions can be used to add support for any user-defined data types in NWB. Uh, these can be custom types specific to your acquisition system, specific to your processing pipeline, or just a type that is very niche and isn't supported in the core right now. To help create extensions, you can use the NDX template tool. There's instructions on, uh, on the website here um, of how to, how to use it and how to build upon it. You can also refer to the uh, extensions tutorial on the main nwb.org website. We then encourage you to register your extensions in the NDX catalog to make them findable and accessible to the community. This also allows people to collaborate on existing extensions, which will reduce duplicated effort and help people converge on a standardized schema, help the community converge on that. Uh, and then we can use these extensions and the NDX catalog as a whole to refine the core NWB standard. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I'll open the floor to questions. So <clears throat> hopefully it didn't go too fast. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask in the chats, or I think there's few enough that I'll probably just... All right, Helen asks, what are some dream extensions for the NWB team? Uh, well, we have some large-scale extensions in the works. Oliver and Pam are working on an extension kind of to, to build more uh, structure, um, organizational structure into the intracellular electrophysiology uh, storage formats in NWB. Um, so you can store a lot more metadata about each particular sweep uh, in recording. Uh, and that has turned out to be a large scale undertaking that is currently, I think it, you can find it, uh, or, Sorry, I think Oliver described it in uh, his intracellular ethos tutorial, but that's a extension that's in the works. It's mostly done and will likely be integrated into the core NWB standard in the near future. Other extensions, we want to include support for storing specific metadata for a lot of the different acquisition systems. This will make it easier for um, acquisition systems to output directly into NWB. Right now, they're a little hesitant to transfer over because NWB doesn't store this or that um, that they like to store in their files. And we want better extensions for, uh, for storing the vast variety of uh, behavioral data out there as well. Yun Zhang asks, I'm wondering whether a MATLAB version of extensions will be shared later. What I described here uh, is a way to create extensions, which ultimately are just the YAML files. Um, unfortunately, in, on the MATLAB side, we don't have an easy way of creating extensions using MATLAB, but you can still handwrite the extensions, in the YAML files that would be loaded and are used by both PyNWB and MATNWB, um, or you can follow the Python process, which is relatively simple and doesn't take too much knowledge of Python to get working. Yeah, and one important point is once you have those YAML files, whether you create them manually or you use the Python API, um, you can use those for either MATLAB or Python. So this, um, this magic thing that Ryan described for dynamically creating the classes from those YAML files, that's what MATNWB does for every class. So when you, you can run generate core on the extension files, on the YAML files that you create, 
and then um, use any extension. So whether, even if you created these extensions, these YAML files using PyNWB, you can use them no problem in Mac and WB. I believe for all of these, all the extensions in the catalog right now, um, the, the, uh, the Python code to generate the YAML files uh, are included as in the, the source code for the extension. All right, great. Well, uh, I'll pass it off to Andrew uh, to talk about making, to talk about enhancing these extensions and making custom API classes for your new custom types. 